Murderer? That's what mother-in-law Olivia screamed as she lunged at me. Dodging instinctively, Olivia banged hard on the hospital room door. We were in a hospital, and I had just been called here by Olivia. She said my husband was in a traffic accident and needed me to rush over. Despite rushing to the hospital in response to her words, I was met with this treatment. What happened? What do you mean? I shouted, taking a step back from Olivia. You pushed your son towards the road, didn't you? Olivia's accusation left me dumbfounded, but I braced myself and denied it with all my might. I didn't do such a thing. Who would say such a lie? Olivia heard my words and laughed with a scornful smile. As I wondered why, a voice came from behind me. It was me. To think you'd push someone and then lie about it. That's bold. The voice came from my husband in bed. He looked at me with utter disdain, his legs wrapped in bandages. My name is Harper, a 27-year-old housewife. Before getting married, I worked in the office of a small company and met my husband, Kevin, through a friend. We are the same age. He worked for a rival company, and we hit it off talking about work from the start. After a while, he pursued me. We got married, and I quit my job to move closer to him. Since he lived with his parents, we needed to find a new place to live together. But we couldn't find a satisfactory apartment. I hate to bring this up so soon after our wedding, but I've been hoping we could live with my mom, who's not in good health, at my family home. Of course, finding our own place would have been ideal. My mom wouldn't force us, but she'd be happy if we could live together. So, please, can we? It's not ideal, but it's alright, right? And then, my husband said, Seeing this, I realized he had always intended to bring me into his family home with Olivia and wasn't very keen on finding our place. However, I thought maybe he was considering my feelings by not forcing the cohabitation immediately. Living with Olivia right after getting married made me anxious, but when we went to greet my in-laws at their house, Olivia seemed kind and cheerful. Besides, their home was impressively located. I told my husband, All right, but I'm still new to everything about Kevin's mom and the household, so please give me lots of advice on chores and everything at the beginning. He responded with a smile. Of course, we promise to work together on this. So I agreed to the cohabitation. Once we started living together, don't be too tense, Harper. To me, you're a daughter, so feel free to relax. Olivia said. Olivia wasn't in good health, so I took on most of the household chores. The in-laws' house was spacious, making cleaning a significant effort. However, I made sure it was always clean. I always cooked with enthusiasm, hoping to please Olivia. Thanks to my efforts, Olivia always finished her meals, saying, Everything Harper cooks is delicious. I'm so happy my son married you. Day by day, as I got accustomed to our routine, my initial tension eased. But then, something happened that made me feel uneasy about my smooth sailing cohabitation with Olivia. One day, as usual, I served dinner to Olivia, who after taking a bite, the taste is a bit strong today, commented. That day's dinner was pot au feu, and I hadn't changed the seasoning. Puzzled, I quickly apologized. I'm sorry, I might have added too much seasoning today. Olivia reassured me with her usual smile. Don't hurry, it's delicious. Relieved, I sighed in relief. Remembering reading somewhere that tiredness can affect the seasoning of food. Maybe it's fatigue. I think I'll go to bed early today. I muttered to myself and decided to go to bed early that day. However, from that day on, Olivia began to get grumpy every time I served meals, despite having been cheerful before. Gradually, mealtimes became a source of dread for me, and I spent them in fear. A few days later, to make matters worse, eating such rich food all the time will make you sick. You're trying to shorten my life, aren't you? Olivia scolded me. I hadn't been scolded so harshly since becoming an adult, and I was left speechless. Stammering, I replied, It's supposed to be the same as always. I'm sorry, I'll make it lighter. And apologized, promising to adjust the recipes. Days like that continued almost daily. At that time, I realized that I was living in Olivia's house, 
I feared being kicked out if I didn't listen to her, without having prepared a next place to live or anything. So, I decided to save up for moving out while looking for a new place to live. I decided to save up money to move out so that I could move out as soon as possible. In the meantime, I resolved to study cooking for my own sake in the future. I began researching online, buying books and low-salt diets, and learning to cook with balanced nutrition, keeping the salt to a minimum, and increasing the variety of dishes. Despite my efforts, Olivia's remarks only grew harsher. A woman who can only cook like this is worthless. You're disqualified as a wife. She would say. From this point, Olivia began to monitor my every move subtly. When I cleaned the floors, she would check them with her finger and say, The cleanliness is about 60 points. Mediocre. Maybe you should clean again. And even when I just went shopping or to the grocery store. Don't leave me alone! Planning to run away? Olivia would fuss. Each time I went out, I would never run away. Please, calm down. I reassured her. But... For a while, my reassurances were in vain, and Olivia did not trust me, watching me all day long. Because of this, I had no personal or free time at all. However, this situation came to an abrupt end a few months later. One day, Olivia said, Harper, I've decided not to say anything about your actions anymore. It makes things awkward and uncomfortable for both of us. She said with a smile. Confused? Is that so? I'm glad to have earned your trust, I replied. Though I felt relieved, the previous intensity of her scrutiny made me unable to fully rejoice, suspecting she might be monitoring me in some other way. Sure enough, my suspicions were confirmed. After some investigation, I discovered Olivia had placed a GPS tracker on me, without my knowledge. In today's age, the idea that someone could track me with a GPS without my knowledge was terrifying. I reached my breaking point, but confronting Olivia would not disable the GPS unless I took her mobile phone. Hoping for a resolution, I discussed it with my husband after Olivia went to bed, saying, Kevin, while you're at work, your mom watches my every move all day. Despite being praised for my household duties before, Recently, she's been scoring my cleaning and cooking, and at times, she verbally abuses me. I've been doing my best without cutting corners. She's also placed a GPS tracker on me, and I've been under constant surveillance, making it hard for me to rest. However, my husband, shockingly, maybe she's doing it to educate you because your housework is sloppy. You should be aware of your shortcomings. Defended Olivia. I was stunned and nearly angry, but since Olivia was sleeping in the bedroom, I couldn't argue back or start a fight. I realized I had no allies in this house. My only confidants were close friends from my hometown, with whom I occasionally exchanged messages to relieve stress. My parents were too busy, and my childhood home was too far away for me to seek help. From that day, the conversation between my husband and me dwindled. One day, before going to work, I'm going to be very busy with work. There's a promotion at stake, so I won't be home for a while. My husband said, With my husband not coming home for a while, it would just be Olivia and me in the house. Honestly, living with Olivia, who constantly watches me all day and never stops with her snide remarks, felt daunting. However, given Olivia's poor health and her need for assistance, I couldn't leave her alone. I resolved to endure it until my husband returned. If Olivia's harassment didn't stop, I decided I would firmly tell my husband upon his return that I might not be able to stay mentally well in this situation and consider leaving. While contemplating this, the next day, Olivia asked me to go shopping. Harper, could you run to the supermarket in the next town over? They have a sale on toilet paper today. Olivia said, showing me a map insisting on that supermarket. The supermarket Olivia mentioned was about an hour's walk away. Moreover, we usually bought our toilet paper from a nearby supermarket, and the prices were no different. I wondered why not just buy it there, and couldn't immediately respond. Then, Olivia pressed. Hurry up, it'll be sold out. If we miss today, we won't get it at a discount. It's only sold here. 
and I've heard from the neighbors that this is the best brand. So, please, she said, turning on the TV. I sighed quietly so Olivia wouldn't notice, thinking, No way. We have toilet paper at our regular supermarket. I don't want to go all the way there. Would surely make Olivia even more heated than usual. Although going was a hassle, the thought of being away from Olivia for a long time, because the supermarket was far, made me feel slightly relieved. To lighten the mood, I said, It's a supermarket I've never been to, and I'm bad with directions. I wonder if I can make it, but I'll try, looking at the map. I laughed and left the house, trying not to anger Olivia. Wondering what I'm doing with my life every day. As I was on my way back from shopping, I muttered to myself. Just then, my mobile phone rang. It was Olivia. You're taking too long shopping. Expecting to be scolded, I nervously answered the phone. However, what Olivia said next was completely unexpected. As soon as I left, Olivia said, Kevin has been in an accident and taken to the hospital. His condition is critical. Come quickly. She said urgently. I was stunned and couldn't organize my thoughts. What? Kevin's in the hospital? That was all I could say. I wanted to ask more, but Olivia hung up abruptly. Left without details, my anxiety grew. All I knew was that my husband was injured badly enough to require hospitalization. Was his life in danger? Was he in a state where he couldn't communicate? Various thoughts raced through my mind, and I was distracted all the way to the hospital. A few minutes later, with prayers for his safety, I cautiously opened the door to Kevin's hospital room. Seeing Kevin lying in bed, I asked, Kevin, are you okay? I rushed to his side. Kevin seemed conscious. However, he stubbornly refused to meet my eyes. As I wondered why, Kevin has suffered serious injuries, breaking both legs in the accident. It's your fault, isn't it? What are you going to do about this? Olivia suddenly stood up and yelled at me. Me? Of course, having no idea what she was talking about, I was stunned. Then, my husband looked at me and sneered. Don't play dumb. You pushed me from behind while I was working. Because of that, I was pushed onto the road and hit by a motorcycle. He shouted. Even the victim himself blamed me for the accident. I didn't do such a thing. Despite my desperate denials, Olivia berated me. Enough already. I've told you multiple times that you're the culprit. Just admit it. What you've done is as bad as murder. So pay for the medical bills and compensation. And let's get a divorce quickly. You're the worst. She yelled at me loudly. Being treated as a criminal for something I didn't do was unbearable. So I said, Wait, there's no way I did anything. I wasn't even there. And I don't know Kevin's work schedule or his days off, right? I denied it with all my might, unwilling to accept being treated as a criminal. At that moment, the police and a woman entered the hospital room. The police greeted my husband and then went to talk to the attending doctor. The woman who stayed looked surprised to see me and said, Thank you for earlier. I'm sorry for barging in unexpectedly. My apologies for the late introduction. My name is Taylor. I'm a close colleague of Kevin. I came to visit and talk. She bowed deeply and greeted me politely. My husband surprised and said, Uh, you know each other? To which I replied to my husband, Well and looked at Taylor. That morning, I had noticed something my husband forgot. This is important, I need to deliver it right away. What my husband forgot was the keys to his company car. He sometimes brought it home and mentioned it was for driving a work vehicle. I tried calling my husband but couldn't reach him, so I decided to deliver the keys directly to his office. The woman who handled it when I rushed to deliver the keys was Taylor. Unaware of anything, my husband pointed at me. Taylor, you better not get involved with this one. Truly the worst kind of person. And told Taylor. Taylor calmly asked my husband, Why would you say that? My husband started to get agitated. Because this serious injury was all her fault. I was pushed from behind while at work, ended up on the road, and then got run over by a motorcycle. Taylor said, 
That's terrible. My husband sought sympathy from Taylor, saying, Yeah, it happened right around 12 p.m. when I was looking for a place to have lunch. It's the worst. Taylor's expression suddenly turned stern. She glared at my husband. That's strange. Harper was at our workplace at that time, delivering the company car keys you forgot. So your story doesn't add up. Taylor, filled with anger, continued. And isn't this key a duplicate you made? All keys for the company cars are accounted for, and there's no record of two keys for this car. This key shouldn't exist, so why was it at your house? My husband's face turned pale. Maybe my memory is fuzzy from hitting my head in the accident. I have no recollection of the keys. Could you maybe ask the admin staff about it? And he nervously said. Taylor dismissed this and said, I won't let you say you have no recollection. Discovering a key duplicate is a serious matter for the company. I didn't come here without doing my homework. I've already spoken to Aria from admin. Hearing this, my husband suddenly panicked and said, Please stop. My wife is here. I admit I made the duplicate. Feeling suspicious, I asked Taylor, Can you tell me more about this, please? Taylor agreed. I understand it's difficult, but I believe hiding the truth is a greater sin. It turns out your husband duplicated the key to use the company car for rendezvous with Aria. Hearing this, I confronted my husband. What? You were cheating? He continued to make excuses. No, maybe someone else used the car pretending to be me. To pin the blame on me, they might have put the key in my bag. My husband had a smug look on his face, thinking he had come up with a clever excuse, but Taylor sighed. We checked the dashcam footage, and there's no mistake that it was you and Arya cozying up in that car. Should we have Harper confirm it too? Faced with this, my husband clenched his back teeth and sighed deeply before admitting to the affair. Taylor told my husband, We'll contact you about your punishment later. Just don't expect a promotion. In fact, you should prepare yourself for a demotion. My husband pleaded in a panic. Taylor, please. Anything but a demotion. I have medical bills coming up. Look at my legs. But Taylor, without changing her expression, refused. Using the company car for an affair and breaking your legs are unrelated issues. At that moment, the police returned to the room. The officer said to me and Taylor, Sorry for the delay. We've confirmed that Kevin was pushed onto the road and has broken his legs. Hearing this, my husband, who had been sobbing, suddenly had a calm face and said, See? It's true my wife pushed me. Look, Harper, it's better to confess. Lying will only make things worse. The officer looked at my husband curiously and said, Well, I didn't say Harper pushed you. We've identified the perpetrator from the security camera footage. Suddenly, Olivia began to show clear signs of agitation. She laughed artificially and said to the police, You don't need to check the camera footage. The victim himself said Harper pushed him. And that's the best evidence, right? The officer, with a serious face, replied, Mom, please don't pretend. We've confirmed on video that you were the one who pushed your son. He was hit by a motorcycle immediately after being pushed, so it doesn't seem like he had the chance to see who pushed him. We'll need to verify this with your son as well. Olivia, realizing she couldn't escape, defiantly admitted, Yes, yes, I pushed my son. So what? I couldn't contain my anger and said, How could you cause an accident for your own child and then blame me? That's truly the lowest. Unperturbed, I didn't want to get caught. I made you go out far so that there wouldn't be any contradiction about your alibi when the accident happened. Olivia replied, Me and Taylor were speechless. My husband was shocked realizing his own mother had nearly killed him. Still unable to comprehend, he started to lose it. Hey mom, what do you mean? You're not going to say it's a lie that you didn't do it? Why? Explain! He screamed, 
almost raising his hand, so the police hurried to stop him. Even restrained, he wouldn't stop talking. To me, Harper, I'm sorry for the affair. You don't have to do the housework or take care of mom anymore. Let the grandma who caused the accident do everything. He said. Olivia, frightened, shook her head. Seeing this, my husband became more agitated. What? Grandma? You can't say you can't do it. Before Harper came, you used to give me an allowance and did all the housework, right? Anyway, I can't work with this body, so you better work, even if you have to crawl. He yelled. Stunned, I listened. This is Kevin's true nature. I've been verbally abused and taken care of him every day. I thought I was finally freed from this life when you came, Olivia said. Though I felt slightly sorry for her, I couldn't sympathize with Olivia. I had no intention of helping her or continuing to live in the in-laws' house. Even as the police restrained her son, Kevin has always treated me terribly. Before we got married, he treated me like a slave. He would gamble away our money and then yell at me to work harder. At home, he wouldn't lift a finger to help with cleaning or cooking, but had no problem complaining about everything. I hoped things might change after we got married, but seeing how he treated Harper, I realized nothing had changed. I was afraid of what you might do if I confronted you. Harper might get fed up and leave, and then I'd be the sole focus of Kevin's aggression. As my health began to decline, your presence became more and more terrifying to me. Before I knew it, I had pushed you away. She explained. Olivia's expression remained cold. After that, Olivia went on to vividly describe to the police how violent and oppressive her husband had been, pouring out all her grievances. Olivia's story was relentless, and Taylor and I left the hospital as instructed by the police. Ultimately, Olivia was arrested for attempted murder. There were various circumstances, including the terrible way her husband and his family treated her. However, because Olivia had a clear intent to kill her husband, she couldn't avoid arrest. Even as she was arrested, Olivia didn't resist. In fact, if being away from Kevin means going to jail, I'll go gladly. Finally, I'm free from this painful life. She said through tears. Life at my in-laws' house was mostly difficult. Having been cheated on by my husband, living together was no longer an option. And with Olivia needing care gone, I had no reason to stay at the in-laws' house. So, I packed my bags and left the in-laws' house before my husband was discharged from the hospital. My husband avoided arrest as the victim. However, he faced demotion for making a duplicate key to the company car and having an affair with a junior staff member. Furthermore, he was fired for repeatedly using company money to cover expenses for dates with his mistress. No severance pay, and he was even asked to compensate for the damages he caused to the company. My husband complained. Wait, I've been working all this time and they won't give me a dollar? What a black company! I'm better off without them! It seems he had no awareness that his actions were criminal. He planned to marry his mistress, but Arya, having no interest in caring for a man with both legs broken and unemployed, left him, leaving him alone. I filed for divorce from my husband. I made sure to claim compensation from both my husband and Arya. I kept my husband's contact information until the compensation was fully paid. But he sent messages daily, saying, I'm sorry, I'll reflect on my actions. Please, let's start over. Feeling terrified, I deleted his contact information as soon as everything was settled. As for me, I found a place to live explained my situation, and returned to my previous job. Although it was a company I had left once, everyone welcomed me back warmly. Without children, I decided to focus on my work and build my career, living each day with integrity.